Welcome everybody to Funeral Nation episode 103. I'm Ryan Thogmartin. That is Jeff, the Funeral Commander Harbison. Man, Jeff, you got a tan, brother. Hey, dude, uh, it's uh, 83 degrees out here. As uh, I believe today, Chicago is estimated 20 inches or 20 feet, 20 something of snow. I mean, it doesn't matter, but yeah. Uh, I like to keep it because um, I'm an outdoor kind of guy. Yeah. How much snow you guys got this year? Uh, how much snow? snow? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, about as much as rain we got. Uh, none. <laughs> uh, living in paradise. Cool. Well, what do we have coming up on today's episode? Hey, you know what? I'm really excited today. This is a change makers episode. So we're having people on that are making a significant difference. We're going to have Matt Morian and Zach Carnley from the Millennial Directors Group. Y'all are not going to want to miss this because I'm telling you, I believe in what they're doing and what they're bringing to the table. So, uh, and by the way, I'm starting to learn how to speak millennial. You know, I'm going to be the millennial whisperer. Hey man, those millennials, they're underrated. <laughs> so, uh, what's in the news we need to talk about, buddy? Oh, a couple of things. Number one is the uh, Funeral Consumer Alliance is you know doing their yearly push on funeral home pricing and transparency and trying to push uh, through a, a mandate that will allow each state to enforce their own rules regarding whether or not funeral homes have to display pricing online. So. Um, that's been making a big stink. You know, I think that's something we uh, should address because we did have some listeners or followers, our effing folks out there, ask some questions about that. Why don't we set up the show next week to address that specific from uh, some mandating? Absolutely. Yeah. All Absolutely. right, cool. And then we've got uh, a gentleman in West Virginia tried to, you know, sneak a little bit of money into his own pocket. Yeah, here's another winner that uh, really helps the profession look great. But uh, the good part is um, he's written himself into pre-needs to 3 to 30 uh, that he's going to be spending in the penitentiary. So uh, I hope that he is uh, going to get his spot in the soprano section of the choir and uh, enjoy his time while being a jailbird over there in uh, West Virginia. <laughs> Dummy. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, come on, man. Come on, man. Hey, speaking of come on, man, we got some great uh, sponsors and title sponsor with Jamie and his crew and uh, certainly at Sitch Casket. How about let's uh, share that before we go into our interview. What payment method do you prefer families use for your goods and services? Most funeral homes and cemeteries prefer cash check or credit card over life insurance as the preferred method of payment. However, families who use life insurance are able to purchase the funeral service of their choice and spend 31% more on your goods and services. By encouraging more families to pay with insurance, you can create a better experience for the family and become more profitable without increasing your call volume. The reason most firms prefer cash check or credit card over life insurance is that insurance companies are a hassle to deal with and payment can often take weeks or months to receive. With CJ Financial, you can receive funding within 24 hours of verification of benefit, thereby eliminating the hassle, headache, and cash flow delay in processing insurance death claims. Let us show you why hundreds of funeral homes all across America choose CJ for their assignment funding needs, and why many associations, accounting firms, and industry leaders recommend CJ to their clients and members. Awesome. All right, Commander, who do we have? Uh, that we're going to interview today. We got two young guys. They're bearded dudes, you know. Um, I put this white stuff in mine so I look more mature and up here in my hair because if it was out, you know, um, total black, I'm just not sure it would work out. But uh, bottom line, Matt Morian and uh, also Zach Carnley from the Millennial Directors Group. Let's roll that interview. Zach and Matt, welcome to the Funeral Nation show. How's it going over there, guys? Going awesome. Doing good. Thanks for having us. Good. We're glad to have you here. Please, uh, if you will, take a moment each and share with us about uh, where you are and what you do in the funeral profession. Okay. I'll go first. Uh, name's Zach Carnley. Um, I've been in the funeral profession for about 14 years in total now. Uh, randomly got into it, took a part-time job at a funeral home in college, then got kind of crazy and went to mortuary school after that. 
I'm now a funeral home manager uh, in a town called Burleson, which is a little south of Fort Worth. Um, I've been in the profession about seven years, um, same first generation. I was in uh, retail sales and I love talking to people and I hated selling them stuff. I found the uh, funeral profession gave me an opportunity to really educate uh, families and spend that time with, with them without that pressure. Um, but went to Dallas Institute of Funeral Service, graduated in 2011, and been working in uh, basically the Fort Worth area of Texas ever since. Excellent. Very cool. Well, you guys are both uh, millennials, and uh, you're part of the Millennial Funeral Directors Group. Uh, tell us a little bit about that group and, and what you do. Well, we, Matt and I met at ICCFA University. That's where this friendship blossomed. Uh, we were actually competitors whenever we started. Now we're, we work together and kind of look like each other now. It's kind of weird, but um, um, basically, you know, we'd always talked about starting like some kind of group or something like that, that caters towards people our age and people, you know, new and entering the, the profession. Um, so we decided to, we came up with kind of creating a blog and really trying to get our, our opinions out there and things that have helped us. And uh, together we started millennial directors. Yeah. I know, you know, millennial is a, a buzzword, uh, positive, negative connotations to it, but I knew other millennials, other younger uh, funeral professionals want to have a voice, but on the other side, anyone that hires or works with a millennial probably wants to hear what's going on in that circle too, to try and figure this uh, crazy generation out. So, you know, it's interesting. Um, I, I'm an advocate uh, of millennials. I love millennials, right? Uh, frankly, I think you guys bring a really fresh perspective to a lot of different things, right? Uh, one of the things I appreciate about millennials is if you ask them a question, you have an answer in about 30 seconds, Siri. Uh, mm -hmm. What did that old guy just say right then, right? Um, and we had to use these things called, there were books and encyclopedias, you know, back in the day. No more. Aside from that, uh, share with us from your perspective what you believe that millennials are bringing to our profession. Well, Jeff and Ryan, I mean, what I think we're bringing to the table is that we're, we think outside of the box. I mean, we're, we're pretty creative. Um, we're more adapt to listen to families. Uh, you know, we take things that we learn from conventions and other funeral directors and we really uh, put it into action. Um, you know, when they say put the pin down and listen to a family and get a life story, I think that's what we're doing differently. Uh, we really put families first and we're really open to saying yes when a lot of other funeral directors say no. Uh, we, we like to make things happen and we put the family in the center of it. And I think we just really think outside of the box. Yeah, I think adaptability, um, being able to go into a, a situation where something's asked of us that it, it's not against the rules, but it kind of bends them. And we find a way to make that happen without, you know, without making people uh, upset or, or disturbing uh, anybody. Always within reason, you know, compromise is key. But uh, the willingness to look at uh, our profession as a whole and, you know, admit to us that there are ways it can always be better and uh, being a part of making that change. You know, that's a, that's a really great thing you just said because uh, I believe that about millennials, that there, there aren't as many boundaries that you've created for yourself. You're actually taking a broader view. Well, guess what the, uh, the consumers are doing? The same thing, right? Yeah. Th there are rules, right? But then there's maybe some dumb rules that we've done along the way, but I appreciate that. I know Ryan, you've got a question. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm kind of in your boat, right? Uh, I'm at the the upper end of the millennial scale, uh, just young enough to to be included as a millennial. But you know, what are some of the challenges that you think millennials face being in the funeral profession? I think pretty typical, and I'm not gonna uh, get onto the old people, but I think our older compadres uh, uh, don't think that we have a hard work ethic. Um, they think that, you know, we're lazy and, uh, typical millennials always have our face in our phone, which we probably do a lot of the times, but, um, um, that's kind of the typical things. I don't think whenever we're trying to take care of a family, they think some of our ideas are just too wild, or I can't believe you're doing that, or that's not how the traditional way is done. So that's things that I think we face is kind of trying to 
put our thoughts and our, our plans to action with uh, the older generation kind of looking down on us in that regard. Yeah, it's, it's kind of fighting perception and uh, trying to make reality um, much more like we think it can be. Um, like you, Ryan, I think we're both kind of on the, the upper scale of millennialism and uh, it, it helps us hopefully be uh, the, the, the people that can define what it really is for the younger millennials and be, beyond too. I mean, Generation Z are uh, the ones that are in mortuary school now uh, and beyond, uh, as you can imagine. So we're, we're, we're trying to set a good example while uh, doing what we love. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, another point that you have uh, that's a challenge it's basically working with old people, right? The dead ones are no problem. It's the old guys, right? What a pain in the neck. You know, so uh, I'm a big fan of millennials. I actually uh, uh, have made two of them, right? <laughs> and like another. And so uh, bottom line is I, I, I get it. And I think that our, our profession should start embracing and working and listening a little more closely to you guys. Cause in some respects, I really believe you're more in tune to what's really going on out here. So speaking of which, uh, tell us about some of the future events or meetings or things that you guys are thinking to have. And Ryan and I want to make sure and support you. So let's talk about that. What's some things that we could do to help you out? Well, I mean, there's, there's things that, you know, we're doing and a lot of it's on a local level. Like I do a lot in Texas with uh, what I call emerging leaders. Um, you know, I try to get uh, younger folks involved, but like I said, not only younger, but people new to the profession. Um, so we're having a university this year, kind of a spin off of ICCFA where we're having various speakers come in. So the whole idea is to just kind of learn and learn from each other and learn better ways to approach things. And uh, as, as me and Matt grow, you know, with millennial directors, we want to try to get into NFDA and ICCFA and Canaan and some of those different organizations and try to really beef up their next generations because they're kind of stagnant right now. And we'd like to see those come back. Right. Um, in fact, I just had a, an idea. I talked to you guys offline about some things maybe we can do. I think it'd be a lot of fun. Ryan and I can help you out with it. Absolutely. And that's that's right. really what we're doing. Oh, go ahead. No, I was just saying that with piggybacking off Zach, I'm, when, when people reach out to us in, in general, they're, they're wondering what we can do to, um, I, you might call it revitalize or at least excite um, their newer funeral directors. You know, I won't always call them younger. You know, some of us, this is our second or third career, at whatever age we are, and, and that, that base doesn't always get covered. So it's. Yeah, I don't uh, think you guys should be discriminatory. Maybe you should just have a, a special category for the millennial at heart. There you go. That, can we coin that term? Yeah, yeah. I'll be in charge of the senior millennial group. How about that? Perfect. Yeah, because I don't want to miss that party. You know I'm going to be there, right? <laughs> <laughs> the cigars keep you young, Jeff. The cigars right. keep you young. Hey, you got that right. All right, gentlemen, this is the part of the interview where we do our lightning round questions. So I'm going to ask each of you a series of five questions, one word answers, fire away quickly. Uh, it's our lightning round. All right. So, uh, Zach, I'll, I'll start with you first. Uh, Texas or A&M? Oh, definitely A&M. Okay. Metal or wood? Wood. Celebrity crush. Sorry to my wife, but Jennifer Aniston. Apple or Android? Apple. And best vacation spot? I'd love to go to Ireland. Very good. All right, Matt. You're in Did the you say seat. Iowa or am I hearing wrong? Ireland. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. <laughs> good one. All right, Matt, you're up. All right. Texas um, or A&M? I'll say A&M too. Oh, all right. Meadow or wood? Uh, wood, for sure. Celebrity crush. My wife already knows. It's Jennifer Conley. So. Oh, okay. Two Jennifers. Uh, Apple or Android? Apple. And best vacation spot? Uh, where my family is. Where I can take me, man. There you go. Nice. Excellent. Well, Matt and Zach, uh, we're really glad you guys are here. You really are change makers, and we're excited to get behind you. Um, I'll, when we finish this uh, portion of our interview, 
I'd like to throw some ideas at you with Brian and I um, that we may be able to help grow this group and uh, be part of it and also support you in your endeavors because I frankly believe you guys not only the future but you kind of got some something going on there appreciate it thanks Jeff yep. thanks Ryan right. keep it well, up so you guys around at some point soon and uh, let us know again and look for your millennials uh, if you're not effing watching this show something's wrong with you okay <laughs> right you too Got that right. Yes, sir. All right. So now how about get your effing crowd behind us? All right. Got it. All right. Thanks All for right, being man. here. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you guys. Uh, another fantastic interview. This one hits a little close to home to me as, as a millennial and part of that group and as someone that did face a lot of uphill challenges when I first got into the, the funeral space and really kind of tried to debunk the traditional ways of doing things. So kudos to those guys for pushing the envelope and, and that message forward. But um, our interview segment was brought to us by Sitch Caskets. Let's uh, roll that interview. Or, no, let's roll that promo. Funeral Nation is sponsored by Sitch Casket. Sitch has changed everything for funeral homes facing declining profits from cremation, with casket quality equal to the top domestic brands, but at half the cost or better. Enter now to win a free Sitch Casket at sitchcasket.com. Sitch, only your accountant can tell the difference. All right, Jeff, what do we got coming up uh, for next week? You kind of highlighted it a little bit there earlier. Yeah, before we go, I think it's worth mentioning because in our change maker, oh, yeah. we typically don't put um, uh, a spotlight or a um, FT, WTF, FTD, WDF. Uh, anyway, I just thought this was worth mentioning. And because this segment is generally a little shorter, but you know, if you'll throw that picture up there, here's a guy that was at the uh, Philadelphia Eagles parade and he brought his wife's urn uh, to the parade. And what I read, it was really interesting that he um, brought her there. She was a lifelong Eagles fan, but I understand this. Uh, a policeman saw him, spotted him. And uh, actually he was given a toast uh, from the team or a thumbs up or high five. Wow. So, hey, you know what? Those guys we just talked to, they would come up with this idea. That's right. They would think of something like that. Everybody else would, no, no, we can't do that. That just wouldn't be, uh, no, no, that's not traditional. <laughs> Get over yourself, all right? Come on, man. Anyway, next week we're going to uh, discuss pricing, you know, and what is the FTC, uh, are they going to actually consider this? Should it be on your website? If it's on your website, what do you do? And Basically, let's talk a little business next week. What do you think? I love it. I love it. It's a, it's a conversation that needs to be had, and it's a conversation that is really driving a lot of change as well. I mean, because uh, I believe the last statistic I saw was 53% of your homes include their pricing online. So it's, yep. it's higher than it was. So I think we ought to get into it, and you've got some really great insight on uh, just that pricing discussion from a, a strategic standpoint of actually running the business to make money. So uh, Yeah, yeah. Um, it's not a charity and uh, we, we will see funeral homes going out of business in the near future. In fact, there was something else that came up with the small business administration loan. We'll probably get uh, Tim to talk about another point. That's going to be an issue long-term. Yeah. Anyway, uh, y'all tune in for next week and give Zach and uh, my man, Matt, some love and stay tuned. Millennials start, start following in. I know that you guys are great effing fans of ours, but we're going to bring you something that you need and uh, we're going to help bolster that organization. Absolutely. All right. Well, that wraps up 103. Until next time, have a great effing week. Out here.